Hey savvy people, it's Savvy Nick here, and today I'll continue with episode 4 of the C++ tutorial for beginners, and in this episode we'll be covering variables and how to declare them, and also how to assign something to them. Alright, and just beginning here, I'm going to go ahead and get rid of, uh, let's see, just the C out hello world. And in here, we're going to actually declare our very first variable. So the basic format here for declaring a variable goes something like this. You're going to type in some sort of a data type and then space, you're going to type your variable name. So this right here is the typical way to go ahead and declare a variable. I'll also want to put a semicolon at the end. This denotes the end of a statement here. All right, and this really isn't a valid way to do it because data type is not actually a data type here in C++. So let's go ahead and create our very first one below. Keep up with the series and support the channel by subscribing below and hitting the notification bell for more Linux and programming videos. So our very first declaration of of a variable let's go ahead and use a data type that we learned in the last episode we'll use int shorthand for integer and then I'm going to put a space so again it's following this format above and I'm just going to go ahead and type in var 1 and then put a semicolon so here is our very first declaration of a variable called var 1 that's of a type int or integer into the compiler all this means is that there's going to be a variable and we should reserve some memory for it at least enough to go ahead and be able to store an integer so you might ask what is the value of var1 right now well currently it doesn't have a value because it hasn't been assigned yet we'll go ahead and assign some values here in a moment but before we do that let's go ahead and define a few more variables so we also talked about a float last time so a uh, float is a type of a data type and now we can go ahead and use a, another variable name here so we don't want to use the same exact one instead we want to use a new one so i'm going to be very original here and do var2 with a semicolon at the end so now we've defined a variable 2 var2 of data type float so what's the difference between int and float again well float can store a decimal int can't only whole numbers so you have the two different data types moving on let's go ahead and create a couple more so same thing with char, we learned that in the last video, and we could do var3, and how about bool, and we'll just call this one result in order to change things up. So now I've defined four different data types and four different variables here, and one thing I'll tell you here is that variables must begin with at least one letter and not a number. So if I put one var here instead of var1, that wouldn't actually be a valid name for a variable. Just keep that in mind. With good practice, you won't even have to worry about it, but just something to know. You, of course, can use numbers anywhere else in the variable name, as well as uppercase letters if you want, and underscores. So now with everything here, let's make sure that our program can compile. I'm going to delete this because this isn't really a valid statement and I'm going to save this. All right, and then my terminal, if I just go ahead and compile things here with the command we learned about, we'll go ahead and see that nothing pops up, meaning there's no errors with the compilation and everything successfully compiled, but there's really no output to the program. We've just declared a few variables. So now that we've declared a variable, how can we actually give some type of a value? So as mentioned before, we have a data type, then we have a variable name, and following the variable name, we can assign something to it. So let's say we wanted to assign the number one, and then we could do a semicolon, of course, to end our statement, but what goes between these two in order to actually assign something? Well, all you really need is an equal sign, and this statement would actually be some sort of a initialization of a variable. So let's go ahead and try this below. So now I can say int equal to, let's say one. And since this one's a decimal, we'll do 1.0 just to denote the difference. And for a char, we have to do something a little special here. We have to use single quotes. And then in between the single quotes, we can define some type of a character. I'm just gonna use C for character. And we can only do one character at a time with char. We'll move on to a result. Here we can really just use zero or one, true or false. I like using true, so I'm just going to use that here. And let's go ahead and save this and make sure things compile just fine without warning. Save that, open up my terminal again, run the compilation, everything's great. So that's pretty exciting. We've officially assigned some type of values with the equal operator here to a variable of type int, float, character, and bool. 
or Boolean. So just for fun, let's go ahead and print these values out. If you went ahead and made it this far, please hit that like button for me. It really does help me out. If I use C out and then two less than symbols, I can print any of these variables out. Let's first do var1 and then I'll put a semicolon. We learned about this in our hello world program. We'll talk more in depth about this at some point, but for now just know that this allows us to print a variable out. And the reason I use var1 is because that's my variable name and we went ahead and assigned one to it. So what are we going to expect in the console to be printed out to us? Should be var1 which is one. So let's check and make sure that's true. Save that and recompile my program. Following that, I'm going to run my main program and we can see here that we have a one. Awesome. So just to make things look a little better here, I'm going to go ahead and put something called an end line or ENDL and I'm going to save this. And again, always recompile, run my main program. And now all that does is make it a little easier to read because it moves this line, one line below, and that's really all endline does for us. It's something new that we'll talk about later just to make things a little better formatted, we'll use it. So what if I wanted to go ahead and print some more variables? So let's check out var2. I'll again do an endline. Let's do var3 as well and another endline. And I'll finally do my result and I'll put one more end line. That way we can go ahead and print out the multiple different variables we have defined. Let's go ahead and check this out real quick. I'm going to save again, compile my program. There's been no errors and I'm going to run my program. So we can see here we have one, one, C, one. So with our float, it seems like we got our decimal point truncated. So I'm going to make a little change here. I'm gonna actually put a decimal here like 1.2, save it, recompile one more time and rerun. Now we can see that there's a decimal here. Another question you might be asking is, we put true instead of one. Well, the system also considers true or false as one or zero, like we spoke about before. So it just displays a one because we went ahead and set things to true. We could have also just actually written in a one in here for ourselves and made things similar to what we've seen, but I like the notion of using true. It's just another way of assigning a value to a Boolean. All right, so sometimes you might want to actually assign these variables later in the game. You don't necessarily have to do it right away, but you do have to define them because if you don't define them, then the system won't know what var1, var2, var3, and result are. So let's go ahead and get rid of the assignments right up here. So instead of initializing them up here, let's go ahead and actually make an assignment later on in the program. So I went ahead and made a declaration up here so I can use that variable anywhere in the program. If I just do var1 is equal to let's say for this time, since this is the fourth episode, this is also another way to assign a value to a variable. So let's go ahead and do that real quick with everything. So var2, I'm just gonna do 4.2, and then var3, we'll set that to C again, capital C. And finally, result equal to, let's do false this time. If I save that, and rerun my program over here. First, I'm going to compile, then rerun. We can see that now we have four, 4.2, capital C written out, and then a zero denoting false. And this is really helpful because now we know how to declare a variable and actually assign the variable later in the program. So we could have done this anywhere here in the middle of the main function that we wanted to. Now, if we would have done it below the C out statement, then we wouldn't have had our value displayed because at that moment where C out would have got ran, let's say it was something like this, where it was in between instead. Well, the first time it runs through here, we did declare these variables, but we didn't assign anything to them. We assigned it after the fact and the code is always ran top to bottom here. So these various variables would have been gibberish. All right, and that's really it with declaring and assigning variables. This is great to know in the future. So we can do various things like mathematical operations, logical operations, and many more things that we'll learn about. Well, that's about it. If you have any questions, comments, or suggestions, please make sure to post them in the comments section below. Also make sure to subscribe for future videos and make sure to like the video. Catch me in a great community on Discord, and I'll catch you in another video. Thanks for watching.